Hi, I'm Edscar, and as you're probably well aware, I've been making quite a few Gaunt's Ghosts. And they're up there on my shelf of science fiction models. And just below that shelf is another shelf filled with all of my unpainted models, my pile of opportunity, if you will. Now over the course of my project with the Gaunt's Ghost, I've made quite a few interesting models, character models, models that I want to show off specific techniques, either for constructing them or for painting them, so on and so forth. And at this point, almost every model that I've painted and finished has been in a video, but not these. This is one of the cartons I have on my pile of opportunity to just organize models, and this specific one is for my Gaunt's Ghosts. I have some with Devic Designs Cloak, I've done a video on those. I've got Victoria Miniatures, I've done videos on those. I've got Cadians and Catachins. But the point is that none of these are going to make it to their own video, and so they run the risk of just sitting in this carton for the rest of the time. So what I need to finish these off is a reason to paint these other than I want to paint the Gaunt's Ghost models. And what better than to make a video about them? Well, I will briefly describe each one, but otherwise, that's all there is. So, so I think I'll start with Flamer. Model 1, Flame Trooper. This is made using the Cadian Command Squad Flamer parts, Cadian Torso, the head is from Ye Old Bretonian Knights, and the legs from Victoria Miniatures. It's somewhat of a duplicate of my first Flame Trooper that was used in a video to show some ideas for sculpting. This one is sculpted a lot better than that, and my next one will be sculpted better still. I think this did sneak into a video here or there, certainly when I looked at the Cadian Command Squad. And as for painting, I match most of the style of my whole army, and I even got my original Flame Trooper out to compare the colours for the tanks and pipes. Because this is just me filling in the models that aren't video material by themselves, I'm not really spending a lot of time here. Arguably a speed paint, but this is just a little less than 40 minutes. And it looks fine. Model 2, Last Gun Trooper. This has some parts from all over. The core is a Devic Designs torso and cloak, printed from my 1K screened longer 10. The legs are a Cadian set and one leg replaced with the Anvil Bionic leg. The arms are then Cadian, and the head is Cadian Command Squad with the single eye patch. I quite like Devic's cloaks. It's easy to access for most people, just find a friend with a printer and easier than importing parts from some strange resin casting company, and it's pretty solid. Unfortunately, my printer is a very old style, and so the pixel steps are somewhat visible. I do like the matching eye patch and bionic leg here. There's certainly some story behind this trooper's injuries. Maybe we'll hear that someday. But again, somewhat speed painted, just over 30 minutes, and it looks fine. Not my best work, but it doesn't need to be. Third model, a sergeant, and another Devic torso with cloak, Cadian legs and sergeant's arms, and the head is another from a Warhammer Bretonians, this time a peasant's hooded head. I made this up for a challenge I had with Ratman over on Back to the Brush podcast. We each painted a model from our own army, but using the other person's paints. The idea was to show that you don't need specific paints to match your army, and with a simple understanding of basic paint theory, it's pretty easy to highlight and shadow your way into just about matching. Unfortunately, my co-presenter didn't get the memo, and you'll have to see that video to understand my frustration. Well, I used a different model in that challenge, so this one got dumped on the pile, and so perfect opportunity today to finish it off. I like the peasant's head, it does fit well. However, the belt line is a little off for me. I trim the tunic of the Cadian legs, but there's no belt on either the leg piece or the torso piece, leaving this kind of solid black lump for most of the model. And when I called it done, you can see I've missed some of the details, the sergeant stripes and the aquila on the chainsword. So I might revisit this to add in some form of belt and to paint those last bits, but that's not important for now. 25 minutes well spent. Model the fourth, Treadfeather. Cadian arms and weapon, with standing legs from the Cadian infantry squad, along with the Victoria miniatures torso with cloak, and yet another Bretonian head. 
I swear using Bretonian heads was not the focus of this video, I just happened to have a bunch in my bits box. I can't talk about this one too much as all my footage is out of focus, but there's something also about painting a smooth tube that my green paints just don't like. It wouldn't stick or flow very well at all, and this model took the longest of all at over 50 minutes because of that paint. But the cloak looks great and overall the painting is fine, and yes, I will mention the base later on. Final and fifth model, Plasma Gunner. For this one I actually have some footage of me sculpting it. It was meant to feature in some video or another a while ago, but never made it in. The cloak and legs are from Anvil Industries, the torso is Cadian, and the arms, gun and head are all from the Cadian Command Squad. You might notice a little bit of conversion work I did to that support arm, mainly because I can't stand the side grip, it's just too weird and not viable. Having your grip off balance and forward is quite uncomfortable, and the only thing worse would be a vertical grip where you rely completely on your grip strength. Oh, for crying out loud, really? Well, I took a hand from the Empire Sprue, haha, <laughs> not Bretonian this time, and cut it out to be gripping the plasma gun at roughly the right angle. It's not quite what I wanted, but it's close enough. I gave it a nice bright red, as it's the only plasma gun I have, and painting it red will make it easy to pick out. And yes, the Tanith have used plasma guns, but in very small numbers compared to flamers. And no, I'm not doing some fancy plasma glow. Yes, I know it's fashionable to do a fancy plasma glow. I'm not doing a fancy plasma glow. I'm not doing a fancy plasma glow. Stop asking me to do a fancy plasma glow. All right, fine, I'll do a fancy plasma glow. So I'll do a fancy plasma glow really simply with dry brushing, which is bad because I'm terrible at dry brushing. Starting with the same medium blue I painted the mag coils with, I lightly dry brushed over his arm and face, and then more heavily over the gun around the coils. Then mixed with a lighter bluey green, more dry brushing over the coils, with a few layers of lighter and lighter mix before finishing off with plain white just to highlight each individual ridge. I also pulled out Commissar Hark, as he has the only other plasma weapon in the army, and if I make one glow, I should probably make them both glow. And that's finished as well, and this is probably the best painted of this video, but certainly a long way short of my best Tanith models. I did mention the base of the Treadfeather model, so let's quickly look at that. I made some heavy weapons team bases a few videos ago so that I could remove the loader to represent one wound being removed which is a very backwards way of thinking about it, but that's just how the rules work. I found, however, that these bases are not easy to print and ended up designing a half version with a cutout, which means that when you glue two of them together, you have two slots for bases. Now I can easily fill one of them with milliput or something, but in this case, gluing a standing model to a big disc seems like it might be a little fragile and so I kept it on the separate smaller base just for strength. So there's five models to sprinkle some extra firepower into my ghost's army. Very little time spent on them, certainly less than three hours. And given that I painted them singly and not as a batch, that's pretty good. So have your say in the comments down below, what do you think of this painting method for a whole army? I find this is far, far more enjoyable than batch painting which took me weeks to paint 10 models when I tested it out last year, and here I painted 5 models in just 2 days. Also pop past the description for some links and of course share the video to anyone who might be painting a large army and is having trouble with batch painting. I'm Edgar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.